Hello everybody and welcome to my channel and my playlist Sewing Made Easy. Although it is not really about sewing. Today my video will be about buttons. How you can create your own buttons in a very very simple way. Yes of course you need some extras to buy maybe as you will need a UV lamp as an example, how you do your nails. Maybe your girlfriend got a UV lamp anyway and got some UV gel at home as well. So you can try it with that first of all. But as you know, buttons can be very expensive if you have special ones to fit your gown, to fit your material, to fit the colors of your materials. And that is not always easy. But with what I show you today, you can create and design your own buttons with the colors you need and you want. So, I hope I got you interested and nosy because I will show you what you can do and how you should do it. Let's get started. So here you can see the buttons that I designed myself from very normal looking buttons, mainly of those that are see-through transparent buttons which you can buy very very cheap in any store and what I made out of them. So let me show you how you can do that as well. So here I like to show you first of all the buttons that I will be using for the explanation for the instructions that I give to you. As you can see I mainly got the see-through transparent ones which you can buy as I just looked it up in the internet for approximately three euro if you buy about 50 of this size. With other words you can really try around a lot before you really get started with the ones you want to use at the end. Also I got some black ones and some dark blue ones lying there. With other words any total simple button you should be using that hardly didn't cost anything so you can make anything out of it whatever you want. But the most important thing what you will need to do those buttons is you will need a UV lamp exactly as if you're doing your nails as an example and all the colors the UV gale colors that you would like to use for your buttons or that you're using anyway for your nails. And as you probably know, you can buy the UV lamp on its own, starting from about 7 euro on. Or if you buy a whole starter set, as an example, they're starting with all the gales and all the things you need actually to start with for starting from 20 euro on. And you also need maybe some little dots, as you can see here, or just a little wooden stick for what we're going to be doing now. And to do this job properly, you will need a little piece of styropor about one centimeter thick. And you need some pins because we somehow have to hold the buttons down. And this is nice and easy to do with the styropor here because this will later on be pushed into the UV lamp. And in the moment when you got all your tools, all your material in position, you have to make the decision which button would you like to create and design for which material? And to show you, I'm just going to be starting here with my blue glittery. And it does not matter how you start and what you do, every one will be a unique button and I know you will like it. Now you can see my button was moving a little bit, so I just add another a third pin into it to hold it down nicely for me. By the way, the pink one on the right side that you can see is one I've done already for some other clothes that I have. It's just a pink with a glitter over. But now you can watch me just putting some little bits of the gel onto my button as if it would be a, maybe a star at the far end. And I leave a little space in between because as soon as I got this blue put down, I will continue with a little bit of white. And I do exactly the same. I pick some up with this little dotty here and I put my white in between my blue stripes that I got there. Now, as soon as you've done that, you can make the decision, oh, that looks good. I'll leave it exactly like it. Or if you're as crazy as I am, you think, ah, it could even look nicer than that. 
So all you have to do, as this was not in the UV lamp yet, it's still movable, just take your dotty and go around in an uneven direction, uneven way, and immediately you designed this lovely blue white button. And now it has to go for two or three minutes into the UV lamp. But this is exactly written on your UV gel that you will buy how many minutes it will take in the lamp. Normally I would do the amount of buttons now all in one go and push them together in the UV lamp. But as I'm only showing you different ones, I put this one in already to go hard in the lamp while we start the next one. So I picked a black one here, fasten it down with my pins again. And this black one is really a little bit boring. So imagine you got a black material with some golden kind of threads woven in and exactly this button should fit onto this material now that has the golden threads in it. So all I do is take my golden gel here, my UV gel, and as an example, I go just around the edge, all the way around with my glittery gold to give this button this design. Now, I could leave it like that, and I just got this very fine golden ring a tiny little bit towards the inner middle, like that it looks now. Or I could say, okay, the, the dark edge is a bit too dark for me. I want this also to show out differently. So I take some gel here that's slightly gotten, I don't know what you say, do you say iris, iris, <laughs> it's irisating maybe, maybe that's what you say. With other words, when I hold it in the light, it kind of gives it different rainbow colors to show. And I slightly go around with this as well. And then when I've got this light colored gel around it, I just even them out a little bit. So the gold, some of the gold little sprinkle, sprinkles will melt into the gel I've just put on the outside. And as soon as I've done that, of course, this button also got to go in the UV lamp to harden out. And I can take the other one out already. It's just a swap around, swap over. I will leave this blue button on for the moment, as I'm not quite finished with it yet. I'll come to that in a moment. And I'll pick the next see-through button here to put another color on for you to show how easy it is. Why I said we're not quite finished with that button yet because if you if we want it to really be able to wash it to keep it forever on your dress on your garment we will have to put a sealer on later which i will explain again to you as well but i'm sure you know somebody who's doing nails or maybe you do them yourself anyway and then you know you will have to put the sealer on to get it really to hold for a long time or forever, whatever. So now you've seen me putting first the strong pink on, the neon pink. In any way, it doesn't matter how you put it on. It's all your design, it's your ideas. Now I just added some white somewhere in the middle and to really make this one kind of happy looking as an example for a children's blouse or children's or girl's dress. I add a little bit of blue and I just fiddle around with the dot that I got there. And again, my button is already finished with the design I created on there. So it will have to go again in the lamp. And I know some of my gales need two minutes to harden out, some need three minutes. That is something you have to look up when you buy them or which ones you got, how many minutes for hardening out you will put on, on the lamp. Of course, it doesn't always have to be the see-through buttons. You can take this dark blue one as well, or a white one. But first of all, I like to show you one more possibility with the transparent button here. I choose this one because I like to add just some very pale colors to that one, which gives it a real fine look because maybe you got a white outfit and you want just a little bit of a color within the buttons 
to put on. So you see, I use two different kinds of pink and I will use this mint green here, which is really going to be still kind of see-through on the bottom. I spread it out again, however it just comes off the dot off or how it spreads. Because as you know, these scales, they also spread differently. And when you let it sit for quite a moment, it can also run into each other a little bit, which also again gives it a real nice effect. Now I could actually leave it exactly like that, because this could be like that the creation. But whoever knows me knows I'm a little sparkly girl. With other words, I just add a little bit, really not much, a little bit of my gold glitter that I got here on that edge where earlier on did the black button with, as you remember. But just that little bit of gold on that edge gives that button a really, really super look. And we're swapping around. It's got to go in the UV lamp. And now I'd like to take my dark blue buttons that I got lying around here because this is actually two buttons. I like to show you what I'm going to do with them as I have later on next week a video planned to do something with those buttons or with special buttonholes for you. And that's what I want those buttons for. So I pinned them both down already, as you can see. And all I'm going to do at the moment is take my white UV gale and paint over exactly half of one of the buttons. Not more. I just paint over half. Of course, this wouldn't need to be white. It could be any other color as well. Whatever you will need, as I've been saying before, for the material that you have. And on this second button, I do it slightly different. I'm coming out from the middle and going outwards, like putting two triangles on. And also on this button, again, I got to think, do I want to harden it out now, being just with white and the dark blue? Or hmm, should I put just a little bit of glitter over it after it's been hardened out? But that we will look at in just a moment. Because now when my buttons are hardened out like that, I first of all have to get rid of the sweating part that is still on top of the button. What I mean, because I don't know the English word for it, when you just take your nails or these buttons out of your UV lamp, you can feel that there's like a little sticky top of the clue still on it. That has to be wiped off with a cleaner, as you probably know. Then you will put the sealer gale on, which again goes into the lamp for two or three minutes. Then again, you have to wipe it off with a cleaner and then the button would be finished. But let me look at my blue and white buttons again, because you can see now I couldn't resist it. I put a little bit of glitter gale on as well, on both of them, of course. And therefore, I also have to put them back into the UV lamp again before, afterwards, I can put the sealer on to finish off this button as well. But don't forget, and please remember, these are only my ideas of the colors and how you, you can design your buttons. What you make out of it, which color you're using, is all up to you. But what is really the best? of you making your own buttons. You know it. Those buttons you cannot find anywhere because they are your design. They are specially made by you for yourself. And that is so unique. So I put it back in the lamp and we're looking at something else which we can also do. So I got this white button here, but I think hmm, it looks a bit dull on a white dress with a white button, so I like to add something totally different to it, which I can also do. I will take my stamping part that I got with a special stamping nail polish and do something special here as well. It's a stamping set, which you can also buy very cheap anywhere in the big internet stores. 
It has mainly been created for nail design, but as you will see in just a moment, you can also design your own buttons with this. It's exactly the same thing, actually. And there is so many different patterns on these patterns which you can use. It's amazing what all you can do with it. So I got to make a decision. Which color would I like to put on my white button? And which design am I going to pick from those patterns here? So I think a red color will really come out very well to do this. So all I have to do now is choose my pattern. Then I will take the special stamping nail polish, mark the part, the design, very well on top. Have everything lying ready because you got to work quite fast to do this. Otherwise, this nail polish dries immediately. Put it on your pattern there. Scrape it down with this little part, then take your stamp, roll it into it, and put it on top of your button. As you can see, this was a little leaf that I put on there. But I will take this off in a moment to show you what else you can do, because you do not need to stick to just one pattern to one design. Oh, let's have a look if I just add another flower onto this button as well to make it a more and bigger look. So I choose the next one, which is always difficult when you got a big choice like that. And again, you see, I will have to take my little scraper, scrape the polish off, roll this little rubber part into it, and decide which is the position where I will push it on. And there you see, we got a flower or two different kind of flowers. Yes. But like I said before, let's do something totally different because as long as you have not put the sealer over the buttons, over the nail polish or the gale, whichever you put on, as long as you haven't had it in the lamp or put the sealer over it, you can at any time just totally wipe it off again, also in case if you didn't like the design you put on. And also with those units, it's also very important that you always right away cl clean all the surfaces to keep them all tidy to be able to use for the next time when you do the next buttons or your next nails. So I cleaned everything totally off and now I decided I like to put this little violin key on my button, which gives it a real nice look. Again, you can see what I got to do to get this on correctly. And there we go. There you see the violin key and the music line, so you can write some nice music onto that button now. And now I like to add something onto the black button. And I will take a white nail polish, stamping nail polish, better to say, because I want it to really nicely shine out. And I decided I will use this Chinese sign, this Chinese writing here. And as you can see, I got to do exactly the same. Put enough of the polish on because it needs to be filled in that part that you will be using. Then you scrape it off right away there and you pick it up and put it on the button. Now have a close look. It is on already, but as there is this one buttonhole really in the way, I decided, no, I want this a little bit in a better position, which means, as I mentioned before, it's not hardened out yet. That means I can easily wipe it off to give it another try and my button has not been ruined. So clean everything properly off, otherwise it will not work when you do the next stamp. So now we fill it again with the white polish, then scrape it off, then carefully put it onto the rubber part of your stamp, and then really take your time getting it in position on the bottom exactly where you want to position it. And then you will find out it comes out just perfectly. There you got your sign. But I could leave it like that. But I could also say, as an example, with a Chinese writing sign, a nice orchid next to it always looks good. So why don't I pick some orchid sign here that I got? And I do exactly the same. Put my polish on, scrape it off, 
roll my rubber stamper into it and position it on the button where I want it. And here we go. Doesn't that look really lovely on that button? And you tell me, where would you be able to buy something like that? Well, and now on all of those buttons that are prepared, I will have to put the sealer on and again put it in my UV lamp to really harden everything out. And here you can see I've done another two buttons on the see-through, also with a stamping technique to give them a different look. And yeah, as soon as everything is has been in the UV lamp, I'm finished with my buttons and here you can see the result from all of them. So this is it for today. My video is finished for you and I hope so much I gave you a real nice idea for totally different buttons that you can design and create for your garments, for your materials to fit just in a perfect way. Stay healthy, stay tuned, give me your comments from all over the world as I'm looking forward to them. So I would say goodbye and all the best to you. Yours Lilo.